And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another cast brought to you by netrunners.co.uk of the Worcester Manor League Cube Draft Tournament held on the 14th of June 2014. Myself, there on the left, are now running, and my opponent, Jamie from Evesham, on the right, playing as Corp. Uh, I'm currently 3 1 down. Boo. But, you know, I'm feeling positive. It was a good win last game, it certainly was a good match. And uh, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic here that I can uh, get back up to level pegging and uh, hopefully improve from there. I'm instantly taking a mulligan. I think I may have drawn up into yet another agenda flood. Um, I think that, oh sorry, I'm playing as runner. That would be impossible. Uh, I think I may have uh, actually not seen any breakers there, as I recall correctly, none whatsoever. And I've got enough. I need to see something. Um, this, is a, this is a good game, as I recall. This was a, a very close match. Bit of a crack at, so hopefully you'll uh, all enjoy it, folks. And uh, hopefully my next hand will be somewhat more amenable. So it looks like he's got uh, certainly has at least one piece of ice there in his opening hand. He's keeping, so uh, not uh, too much agenda, not too many agendas. He's going to mandatory draw. Looks like he saw a, another tailbot there. Obviously a popular choice amongst pod, pod one. He's going to ice up HQ. Install a moat. And install another remote path to turn. And this is the kind of moment where you want to see a turn one keyhole. But alas, I don't think that's going to happen here. But there is going to be a turn one data sucker, which is always nice. We're going to run R&D, second click, access. Can't quite see what it is, unfortunately. A little bit out of frame, but I'll take my data sucker token. And I'm going to trash. Uh, it is a uh, refinery. Go into refinery. I'm going to go again. And pass. I can't see anything there, so that's fine. And last click, I'm going to access one of his uh, remote servers and see a pad campaign, which I can't afford to trash. So uh, he's going to res that and uh, take a credit and to draw. I'm not sure what the other one is there. Maybe he's looking like he's deciding whether to res it or not. Could be that he saw two pad campaigns in his opening hand there, which is uh, you know not ideal in the slightest. But there we are. Well, not ideal for me. Ideal for him, I should probably mention. I'm going to have to think about going in here and taking, seeing a sweeps week. And I think I'm on four cards, so he gets a little bit of credits there, a few credits there. Uh, it looks like it's three below right now. It's not. It's a uh, Cyberdex Trials. Of course he has a Cyberdex Trials, because I've got to take the sucker out. It'd be rude for him not to, really, wouldn't it? Ugh, dearie me. I feel like my luck hasn't quite been in this tournament, and uh, that is just a perfect demonstration of that. Anyway, he's going to ice up R&D there. And uh, I think he's... Passing the turn, he's done. I'm not sure they took money or drew cards there. Let's have a quick look and see what that is. See if we can make it out. No, I can't. Oh, no, so I'm going to run R&D, see a shadow. So he'll take his two credits. And then he's going to decide whether to buff the trace. It'll be interesting to see what kind of deck he's running here. If he does buff the trace, maybe placing a little bit more emphasis on tags. He's not going to, um, but I'm going to take a tag because I'm just not bothered. But I will take a data sucker token, which is nice. I'm going to run HQ and have a look and see what's there. It's a Caduceus, so all the whale and money ice. Didn't see any Caduceus, mo mo mo. So uh, now it's a question of whether he's going to uh, bump the traces. Looks like he's going to bump the first one. Oh, he's not going to bump the first one. Uh, so he gains three and uh, he bumps it by one on the second, which I'll bounce off. With only two credits, I didn't have a huge amount of choice there. I'm going to draw. Seeing a Crypsis, I want to say, and take a credit. Crypts is in a data sucker. That'd be ideal. That'd be that'd be happy days. Apart from the fact he's got a cyber extra on hand. Other than that, though, ideal. So uh, here we go. So he's got a medical fundraiser. Means I gain three credits, which is perfect for me. Even if he gains five, I'm happy with that at this stage because I actually need the money. And he has the cyber deck, so I'm going to lose all those data sucker tokens. And it looks like he's going to draw for his third click. And uh, my nimming there under the table seems to be shaking the camera as if there is an earthquake in the city of Worcester, which I again apologise for. Obviously, the camera was a little bit too close to the or the the, uh, the tripod's a bit too close to the table, and my nervous ticks. Or uh, might not be me actually, it might be my opponent. But uh, either way, oh, so, so okay, it's an app man actually. I do apologise. Going in at one, so I can break through the shadow, and uh, hopefully get some data sucker tokens on the board, so I can then continue to break through the caduceus. So we're going to access R and D, pay one to break, and uh, get one back. Access nothing. I think I might pay two to break there. 
And to be honest, I probably shouldn't have bothered. I probably should have just given up the economy game and said, screw it, I'm going to go through it for free every time. Much more important to get those data sucker tokens ready for the uh, for the caduceus. Oh, it's nice when it stops. Now, I'm pretty sure it's my opponent shaking the table rather than me. So he's having a think here. He's going to. I think he said he forgot to take two for his. Uh, oh, he's going to advance it. Sorry, so he's going to advance the shadow once. Makes perfect sense given that uh, I've got an at man at one. He's going to res uh, the watch him call it thing again from last uh, last round. And he's going to gain a, a token for installing a piece of ice over it. I'm going to draw. Not sure what I've seen there. Oh, he's doing my head in. Stop shaking the table. Right, okay. I'm going to take a. a oh, sorry, I'm going to run archives and take a data sucker token. And I'm going to take two credits. I'm going to discard the Crypsis. Interesting choice. I think probably. Oh, I don't know about that. I guess the Atman's faster. Um, even if it's a little bit more limiting. It's in at one strength, so I guess it's not too bad, but it is very much dependent on that data sucker doing the job. It's going to green level clearance. And. Uh, just thinking here about what we're going to do next. It's going to trash that, so uh, gaining two credits. Yeah, not a huge amount of value, but better than a poke in the eye. And I'm going to take. I'm going to install another piece of ice there. So again, I'm surprised he didn't do it the other way around. That was probably an error there. He probably should have done it the other way around, so he got an extra install and got more value off it. He's actually going to put it on HQ instead. Either way, still should have done it the other way around. So, over to me, I believe. Uh. So it's a difficult ball position here. Um, he's got some strong ice on uh, HQ, and uh, there's a chance he might be building up here to start scoring out agendas. Um, I'm deciding whether or not to break. I'm going to go through and break it and just not take the tag, I think. Crumbs, I don't know. I'm not sure. But either way, I don't see anything. I really shouldn't bother here breaking the shadow. I should just go through it. I'm going to take a credit. If I go through it, I can start building up data sucker tokens, and that's more important at this stage, so I can start putting pressure on to uh, HQ and also any remote that he may play. So I, those data sucker tokens are really important, and uh, I think it's just more important here to uh, build up the suckers, particularly now his cyber deck has gone as well. I'm going to access, and I'm going to see nothing again. Plenty of accesses, but no dice, unfortunately. I see a nerve agent there from from my draw. Just a tempting card to, to play now and focus in on HQ. Start sucking up all the agendas that are staying there. And I'm going to pass the term, discarding as Anna do. He looks like he's got a priority requisition in hand at the very least. He certainly has agendas in hand. Kind of point where you wish you would have seen a sneak door to draft, but uh, not much you can do about that. Looks like a Baku there on uh, HQ. Which isn't going to do much against a uh, one strength that man. Especially not with two seconds already. going to advance the shadow again. At this point I'm sure I'd just stop bothering. But uh, I'm going to draw. Looks like he's seen... Oh, crumbs. I can't make that one out. I'm not sure what that is. Not sure. He must be looking for a bit more ice here. He's going to install and uh, pass the 10. Oh, 
I'm going to take three. I'm going to run the remote. Probably would have been better off there uh, hitting archives once, taking two. Uh, I'm going to see a bastion. And there we go, you see, if I'd hit archives one more time, that would have been a different story. So I think that was a big misplay there. He's definitely got a Jens in hand, though, by the looks of it. Uh, I should have, again, three data suckers there would have been far preferable to three credits. And particularly because I could just hit, I just need to hit R&D here. Uh, who cares if he gets money at this point? I'm all over him, I've got all the... Uh, the tools I need to get through here, just with a data sucker and an at man, just build up the data sucker tokens, keep hitting him through with with the at man, and uh, I can get free reign on all the servers here if I'm smart. Just need a few cre extra credits. He's going to draw, see an enigma, which he'll greedily install there onto that remote. So uh, another two strength piece of ice. Going to install another thing into that remote. And pass the turn. <coughs> Slowly, steadily building up. I'm not going to bother breaking it. I'm just going to take tags. I'm going to access. And uh, so I'm going to get a data sucker token for the privilege. I'm going to take another two data suckers and I'm going to run. Uh, he will res the Enigma, so I will just pay a data sucker and a credit to break. And then I will pay three data suckers and a credit to break that one, the Bastion. I'll access. And don't see anything, a Rex campaign in fact, so uh, no dice at all there. I'm just pointing out he, yeah, he was, uh, just pointing out he needed to res it. He's going to res the Rex campaign, which is fine. Uh, again, I'm not too worried here. But a bit unfortunate. I was kind of hoping with two cards face down, at least one of those would have been an agenda, but he played that very well. Soaked up my data sucker tokens, and here icing up archives would be uh, be a great play. Although I do still have free reign on R and D at the very least. Going to install another piece of ice down on that remote server. Uh, he's going to trash the wrecks, and looks like he's installing a priority wreck into the server. Confident that I can't get into it and advance it once past the turn. I'm going to run R and D. Let him have some money. No dice. Plenty of dice. <laughs> and uh, here I think, you know, I, uh, it's a difficult one. I need four data sucker tokens at the very least. And at least two credits, three most likely. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough to go in there this turn. I probably could just do with taking two data suckers and a credit. I think that would probably be the best idea. Give me enough to uh, start hitting that remote next turn. I'm actually going to take. Oh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Two data sucks and a credit. Good. I'm glad when I'm in agreement with myself. That makes me feel much better and much happier about life. Uh, he is going to res the Watcher McCall it, uh, which gives him an advancement token, uh, which he will use on the priority wreck, which is a great little combo there for still scoring out those three pointers. Uh, he's now in a position to be able to triple advance and score the priority wreck, but there was no way I could go in and get it. He's going to install though, which is a surprise. It's going to solidify up R&D. Surprised not to see him go out and try and score that. I, uh, you know, halfway home is not too bad. He's going to take some money and pass the turn. I'm going to run R and D, make him res it. Uh, see the uh, one that lets him look at three cards on the top of R and D. Or is it the end? Of it? Yeah, I think it's that one. Forgive me if I don't know all the names off by heart. Unusual cards. 
So he is going to have a look at the top three and rearrange them in any order. So there's the priority requisition that I would have won if I'd gotten through. So uh, well played on his part. He puts it two underneath. Access and see nothing. He gets the two credits. Oh, sorry, he didn't pay the one, so I got to look at the top cards, at which point I jack out. Um, yeah, a little bit unfortunate there that you know the priority rec was on top, but he did the right thing by, in a way, not scoring that uh, priority requisition in hand. Uh, but uh, disappointing there, to say the least. Could have scored that extra uh, three-pointer. And I'm going to take a credit and look. He's going to see a Chimera, which I can't break because my Atman's in at one strength. And that Atman's going to keep me out pretty much permanently there. So now I do need the Crypsis in order to be able to break the Chimera. He's going to use that to advance uh, his priority wreck once. And he's going to advance it twice. And then he's going to uh, shipment from Kagawa, whatever it is. And he's going to advance his Shadow Wall and his score is priority wreck. And he's going to res. Yeah, the Baku on HQ for free. So not a huge game, but better than a Pokemon Eye. The important thing is scoring the three pointer. So it takes him three points. Very well played there. Um, there's no denying that. Uh, that deck is working very well. He's got that very well organised indeed. And uh, it looks like he's got another priority wreck in hand there, as well as the one on R&D that we know is coming in two cards time. So the pressure's on here. The pressure is on. So I play the Nerve Agent, and I'm hoping here to go in and take the agendas I need from hand. I've certainly got the ability to be able to do that here at this stage. And uh, I just need to start building up some Nerve Agent counters so I can hopefully go in and take that priority wreck. Um, so it's cost me two to get through. Um, I'll let him have three. And uh, I'll go through and, uh, and access. Oh, I scored the priority wreck from hand, so that was a huge stroke of luck on my part, taking us the three points to all. So that was uh, that was fortunate. He's drawing up into another priority wreck there. Um, and again, if I can get that nerve agent built up, I can do some real damage. But I'm clicking here for econ economy when I, I don't really have a huge amount of economy cards in my deck. Uh, the only ones I'm really looking for here are these sort of Armitage code bus things that come by default. Would have been nice to have seen one of those and clicking for two rather than for ones, but alas not to be. And he's got to be feeling here that priority wreck is probably safer in the remote than it is in hand. Uh, but he's not actually that uh, that flush at the moment with cash. He's only on four credits. Um, R&D is vulnerable, but uh, at the end of the day, it's going to give him extra money to go through. He's going to uh, ship it from Mirror Morph and install over archives and install into the remote. Some interesting tempo plays going on here. I think that was the priority requisition. Um, he certainly wouldn't uh, leave it in hand with just one card. And he's going to pass the turn over. So the priority wrecks in hand there. Um, so either of us score it, it's game over. And uh, it's all going to come down to who can get there first. He needs to advance it five times, but he uh, does have the, uh, the Jinteki card that gives him a free advancement every turn. Um, so realistically. Uh, two turns is, is what we've got here, maximum. And uh, I've got no money, I've got three data sucker tokens, but he has iced up archives, which is the right play. I can still get through onto R&D without spending anything and gaining a data sucker, but it does give him extra credits. I think he's just doing the math as well, to figuring out what I can actually break. Um, I think the first play I probably should make is running R&D, which he's going to do. He sees the priority wreck on top, which he can put underneath. And that card doing great work for him then in, in terms of rearranging his deck. That's twice I could have had a bite it, uh, a priority requisition, and, and not actually get to see it. And it means it secures his R&D for him for another turn or two if he doesn't draw, which I obviously has no intention of doing. Um, he can choose to uh, pay one to not let me see it, which he's not going to do. Uh, so I'm going to go through and give him two credits and access, just so I get that extra data sucker token at the very least. Which you know, that is the important thing. So if I remember to put it on, hopefully I do here because that's kind of important. So yeah, give him two and I take one. 
Now the question is, you know, do I? It's that Chimera that's the problem. I cannot get through currently and access that card. Though, as I remember um, from what I have in hand here, I actually have an Esher um, in hand. It's just about getting the right amount of money to be able to go in and Esher his ice so that I can get into that remote server. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure, but I'm taking three credits. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've got a Darwin in hand as well, which will get through the uh, Dark Chimera for two credits. He's going to clear virus counters, which does cause me problems here. So it means I don't have any means of breaking through beyond running on R&D a couple of times. So I'm going to run R&D. He's going to get to put the priority requisition back to the bottom. Just shuffling it around. And I'm giving him lots and lots of money with that shadow. Don't really have much of a choice. And the reason I'm not taking tags is because we just kind of agreed that there's going to be lots of tags. It's all good. Uh, I'm going to have a run, have a look, see nothing. But gain a data sucker. I'm going to go again uh, on R&D. So again, I'm just going to say, look, here you go, take two credits, I'll take a data sucker. We'll do that twice, three times. There we go. <laughs> That's the end of our turn. <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> So uh, again, it's just getting those data suckers back up and running, so I can get through the Enigma and Bastion. And you know, I'm quite happy for him to do that. So he gets his uh, free advancement. He's going to advance it another time, I believe. There's up to two advancements. I can't quite make out from the twenty-sided die, unfortunately. But again, I've got the Escher in hand. I've got a Darwin in hand. But it's all about having the right combination of data sucker tokens and credits to be able to use either of them to get into that remote server. I know it's an agenda, and I know that I can make it. Um, I just need the right amount of money, the right amount of data suckers, and the right amount of time to actually get in and score it. Um, and whether I can or not is very much the case here. And I've still got uh, a little bit of time. It's probably the last turn here that I can get in before he does, and uh, I'm very conscious of that. I'm going to take two credits, taking me to five, and I know, I mean, I can get in to HQ, but I don't have enough money to get into HQ and break all the pieces of ice that I need. If I recall correctly, I was doing the maths on this, and I was always one credit short. Um, of what I needed to get through here, um, either in terms of playing the Darwin and breaking the, the Chimera, or in terms of eschering over, over all the ice. So, for instance, I put the two R&D pieces of ice onto the remote server, uh, as well as the Baku. Um, but again, I didn't quite have enough money to get through. I needed one more credit uh, in order to get into HQ, use the Escher, and then have a credit left over to break. Uh, all the pieces of ice that would be on the remote server. Um, so again, I say moving these, I think it's the Shiro, the Shadow, and the Baku, or, well, or the Enigma, it doesn't really matter, uh, onto, uh, onto the remote so I can make a successful run with just one credit and access. Because again, either of a score, either of a score that we win. And I'm just trying all the different computations here, really taking my time. Those of you who've watched my cast before, you know I'm a relatively fast and loose player, um, but here I'm just desperately searching um, for the right combination of uh, of moves here that will get me into that remote server. But again, the longer it goes, the more I realise it's just not going to happen. I need one more credit, one more credit to be able to get in and Escher and get into that remote server. And unfortunately just don't have it. The Chimera keeping me out very effectively here. No doubt about it. Um, a real kick in the teeth. A zero strength ice that I just can't quite deal with. Ditching that Crypsis is suddenly looking a little bit foolish. Um, so uh, there's the Escher. Cost me three to play. And I think again, I've done the math wrong here. So it's the on HQ. Cost me two credits. I think I'm just doing this to show that I could have done it for the camera more than anything else. Um, 
I probably should have just accessed, to be honest. Um, again, I think at this point I just shake his hand and say, "Good game." I, I yeah, I think I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I'm pretty sure I'm figuring out here. I don't have the money to be able to do it. Oh, I know that's the Chimera. Now, I know it's going to keep him out, so it doesn't really make a difference. It was a nice thought. And there it is. That's the game. Nothing I can do about it. It is a shame, again, he played very well. Um, he's going to score and uh, take the match. Oh, it was a Fenris, sorry, I do apologise. It wasn't uh it wasn't. It was a Fenris. It's the unres unres piece of ice. Uh, I think he trashed it before, but uh, yeah. So uh, he played very, very well. Again, one credit more. Uh, I could have got in. And uh, there's no denying there. His deck synergized and worked incredibly well with uh, itself to be able to uh, to lock me out and keep me out. Uh, the Chimera was a huge tempo hit on my part. Couldn't quite manage and quite deal with it. And I wasn't seeing enough economy, really, to be able to. I wasn't drawing for it, to be truthful. But uh, he played very, very well. So congratulations for Jamie there. We split that round, uh, which means I'm now cruising for a bruising on a 3-1 loss. Uh, hopefully the game will, games will improve. <laughs> well, that was a great match, though, to be fair. I'm sure you agree. And he, like I say, played very, very well. Um, again, just... The combinations of, of ice and cards that he had worked very much in his favour. He played them at exactly the right times and locked me out nicely, despite having that uh, the data suckers I needed on the board. So there we are. That's the end of uh, round two. We hope to bring you round three shortly. Join us soon.